the LT, the LT2 meets the criteria okay. of the capital improvements parameters. Uh, now on these next few pages, you have uh, debt service repayment schedules. At the bottom of those, you'll see the total payoff, the additional cost versus a level debt service payoff, and over to the right of that, you'll see the total rate increase. So, as you'll see, uh, kind of going through here on the majority of this, uh, you know, the higher the rate, the less the additional cost that you have for the payoff. So, what this council needs to do is decide which one of these schedules that they want to use so that we can move forward. This rate increase is figured on um, roughly 1,600 users. I think we have one or two that's under contract, and we couldn't catch until the next time. But it was, it's figured on 1,600. So it was figured on all. The short answer is no. Citizens, the citizens. that are that are placed here uh, are not the end all of the discussion for rate changes. We're supposed to address rate changes for water every February. And uh, we haven't particularly done that for some time. So if we need to, there may be some additional issues which I think we're about to talk about some of them we so fit into that. When we do that we
separate sheet of paper is a different study. That's on it's wastewater. Water. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And what we're into right now is, is on the drinking water. Okay, so this pertains to wastewater. Yes, sir. There, there's, there's some language for water that reads about the same, and I think the problem that, that you have right now with uh, your wholesale water is that uh, that's under contract. Sorry. And I'd have to get back into that contract again to see when it is it can be renegotiated. Well, one's under contract, one's under uh, it's controlled by ordinance, and we adjusted both of those mm -hmm. a few months ago based on the calculation of the production of water. Now that calculation was based on the budget, and the budget is missing some expense items that have caused the financing issue pertaining to funding these SRF funds. We're funding funds, but we're not showing it in the budget. So that didn't show up in our calculation of expense uh, for water. So that's certainly something that could be revisited. My guess is that, you know, I, I, I don't recall in the contract that there's probably some period that we're allowed to re-up that re to change that existing contract with uh, uh, county water. Um, and we can look at that. And we can include that in what we want to do to pay for the enterprise operations. If, if at the end of the day, the, the rates that we're charging, we cover the expenses of producing our product for enterprise. However, council wants to do that. Did you say there are possible other rate increases other than what we're talking about here? I, I foresee that we're going to have to do something so that we can understand that we not get a better figure of the total. Sure. Because we do a little bit here and a little bit there, it doesn't feel like too much, but when you add the two together, it's just kind of impact maybe. Sure. I think that's very reasonable. Um, so you want to have a little support? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Sounds like we're going to move to this report. How do you guys want to handle it? You guys kind of want to read through and then does everybody read the, flip the page and go from there? Is that, is that how we want to read, how we want to do this? Or? Well, I think we've got a narrative here attached with supporting documents. Right. Why don't we just, I don't mind doing it if you'd rather me do it, but uh, we should probably just read the narrative that the you audience says. Let's start off and I'll support you. Sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, Planning for construction of the wastewater treatment plant required funding via bonds at the state revolving fund. This type of funding mandates certain ordinances which create certain funds and also dictate the amount of funds to be placed in these funds. The following is the original ordinance that was passed in October 2011, and then that's there. And the narrative will continue. Um, that Article 3, Section A had a mistake in the amount to be set back, and you recall this was. We had about a million dollars that we were supposed to have funded in, a, in an account that it wasn't there. And it was really ridiculous that there was an ordinance that said this. So the council looked into it. We figured uh, after some research that this was something that wasn't mandated in the SRF situation. It was something that was calculated um, to, and we could never find a calculus for that. Section 8 had a mistake in the amount to be set back. Uh, the amount of $998,095 exceeded the amount of all wastewater funds. Another ordinance was passed which corrected the error. So then you'll see that ordinance there. And then uh, continuing the narrative on the next page, this resulted in funds being created. Debt service uh, for the treatment plant, wastewater treatment plant, the sewer system revenue fund, the sewer system operation and maintenance fund, the sewer system depreciation replacement, sewer system surplus fund. And there's descriptions of what each one of those funds um, do uh, following that and a current funding schedule. So uh, at the end of the day, 
some of these accounts are being overfunded and some, some overfunded and some are just not needed. These funds were created on the budget report. Expense line items were never created to show the money going into restricted funds. It, to show that the money going into those restricted funds is not available for operations. Because of this, the true financial health of the wastewater enterprise was hidden. Uh, and also pursuant to that, we couldn't see that, that uh, rates needed to be set. Uh, rates were not set in proportion to maintaining operational expenses and funding the newly created account. We're going to set, if it's a cost of doing business, same time, which was January 2012, we decided to combine the unrestricted funds of the city and the water department. A consistent monthly report of deposits and expenditures from both the city and the water department should have been generated for this account to allow each entity to know their exact balance of combined funds every month. This procedure was not done. Uh, so it's, it was, it's difficult to see the separation between water and, uh, uh, and sewer into this fund. Uh, this combined reserve fund continued to shrink over time, which highly got our attention. Uh, while looking into the situation earlier this month, uh, uh, Kelly questioned the city clerk uh, and the water office manager as to their exact respective balances in this combined application account. Both replied that they did not know. Uh, he suggested that both of them generate a history of all the transactions and come up with that calculation across its lifetime. City clerks is still being worked on, but is not ready or is under been going on working on for about a week. We do have the water uh, side of that fund, and that schedule follows on that following page. So, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about this. As you can see, in January of 12, the unrestricted uh, balance. <laughs> into that combined fund was $115,970.65. Um, as you can see, the schedule go down. That's in the far right column. Um, at the end of December 2014, it's a negative $204,787.52. Now there's a little bit, if you look at it in the chart, you'll see that there's a little bit of a and it's the way that it moves down, but uh, there's a statement there that at the beginning of the pro uh, process, we were putting much more of the total uh, sewer sales into that debt service account, uh, and we changed that over time, so that's, that's why that's not just a flat curve. Uh, there was a change in how much was going into that account. Uh, so that gives us our side, you have these bottom two numbers, and what you guys were seeing on the reports was that you were good to the good during that time period at $672,038.10, um, and what actually, um, it, it was a loss in your operations fund of $320,758.17. So you would have seen that difference in, in the total of funds of the summary sheet, okay, that the money was there, but it wasn't, well, most of the money was there, um, but it wasn't, it wasn't being accounted for as an expense in the budget, so decisions that we, we were making based on the health of the enterprise operations were inaccurate, because we were making those off largely off of the budget. Next page has some recommendations, uh, and I think in, in short, we're recommending some immediate action uh, that will alleviate some of the uh, burden, uh, and then we want to take a little bit more time to actually figure out what we need to do long term in terms of any rate adjustment or any other creative. Forward, but uh, Kelly, you want to walk through what the immediate yeah. recommendations 
change the debt service from 60% of monthly income to $32,000 monthly. Um, that should more than service our, our debt service. Change operations and maintenance account to $10,250 monthly, $123,000 annually. That will meet the parameters of the ordinance. Mm -hmm. Council vote to separate unrestricted general fund to allow water office to perform clerk duties for all financial matters involving water, wastewater, solid waste collection, and other matters, should be matters normally associated with that section of the city. Delete the sewer surplus fund and move that money to water unrestricted fund. The sewer system operation maintenance fund needs to move the funds to the water unrestricted Fund, leaving $300 to serve as a base. In other words, that O&M fund can, can come right back, but the ordinance does call for that O&M fund to be created. <clears throat> so we're holding money in there, and, and we really don't need to be holding money in at the end of the year. We just need to make sure that our 112 of the expenses was met as the ordinance calls for. And if it hasn't, then, then we have to hold some money in, and if it exceeds it, then we're fine. So, but that will, if you look down the chart, your, your left hand is kind of what we're doing now. On the right hand side is after these changes. And uh, my figures in the, in the past, or for 14, is it was operating about a $31,000 a month deficit. And although it seems like a drop in the bucket by these few moves, that we can gain $7,000 a month back immediately. Or 6981. So, one of the things I'm looking for here, and maybe we can handle it right, right now or discuss it further, um, but I'm looking for a vote, and I think we could probably handle it, handle it all at once, unless you want to break it up for some reason. But uh, I would be looking for a vote to support the immediate uh, actions as recommended. some of those funds that really did not have to be created, there's a there's a bit of a surplus sitting there. And we'll see that on the last page. And that will allow us to um, go in and peel a couple a couple more layers back because at this point as, as I stated, I'm not comfortable suggesting any kind of rate increase until uh, we, we dig up some more data that, that I feel good about and and then make it recommendation in there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So to tie it back to your earlier comment on the LT2, there's something here and I think we need to take some immediate action on some of this, but I think there's more work to do before we can get it a, a solid number to be considering. But the LT2 stuff can't wait. Are, are any of these Just, uh, it looked to me maybe a, a, um, a bit of a misinterpretation of the ordinance would have come in as far as how some of these funds were set up and, and some of them were created. Um, so I, I, I don't think there's a thing here that 
that is going to um, result in, in meeting the ordinance change of any kind? There's, there's no the ordinance doesn't cover the specifics? No, the, it, it, it's, it's very, the, the debt services is very loose. It just says that the ratio cover the operation and, and servicing the debt is all the debt ordinance says. So, and I hunted for a long time because the, the other ones that I'm used to with SRF give you a pretty specific amount of percentage. Mm -hmm. And the ordinance did not for the debt service. So. It almost seems like they were created just for so that you could see funds in and then a, a, move a couple to of, a move couple of the funds that, that is correct. Yeah. The sewer system OM. Yeah. 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 And, and the language was is a little bit antiquated as far as what we used to see. Basically, they were saying that they were restricted funds that you had to carry the balance, and they use the word surplus a lot. So, uh, I, I think there was, you know, maybe a little cautious, and they set up a, a surplus fund for a restricted fund. They just, they just like this one. Uh, would either of you explain the Hancock Amendment so that we know that we're not doing something that we should do to vote? Basically, the Hancock Amendment says that you should not you should not increase a tax without a vote of the people. It is, is basically what ha is what's happening. And if you use water or sewer rates or or some other fee sometimes to uh, <coughs> run things other than your enterprise, then you are violating that. Those water and sewer fees need to be running your water and your sewer side. Of do you remember we talked about this a year or two ago? We, we saw that the, the proposed the budget that was being proposed two years in a row had a surplus coming out of out of the enterprise operations in the budget and a deficit. If you separate that the enterprise, we had a surplus, and if you said and then what was left in the general fund was less was a negative, and we were so we were using monies from the enterprise operations to do things like buy police cars, and that, that's not appropriate. Um, now, the, there, as far as the, the letter of the law goes, um, everybody's clear on that. There's been lots of, uh, lots of case law that, that has acted on it, but there's been some recent stuff here in Missouri, as I recall, that actually calls some of that into whether or not it's exactly legal to do because you are allowed to provide certain funds, etc. So it gets a little bit murky, but certainly everybody's in agreement, I believe, that the principle of operating your enterprise funds is to charge enough to pay for your enterprise funds, no more, no less, and that if you were to charge more than the cost, that would be the equivalent of taxation without a vote of the people. That's what that's the area we want to stay away from, regardless of anything they want to amend. So the purpose is just to, to increase the rates and not to make it function properly. Yeah, so bring our costs cost down, off. increase the, uh, the efficiency, whatever can be done to, to do that. But at the end of the day, we need to be charging what it costs to. Well, actually, we don't because there is no there is no problem with the general fund. Supplying, funneling money into uh, the enterprise. There's nothing illegal about that. That's that's just the city's buying services, supplementing the services to the people that, that you're serving with your enterprise. There's nothing illegal about that. And in effect, in effect, that's what we've been doing, right? We, so so we could continue to do that. The problem is we don't have the revenues to continue to do that. So. Want the enterprise fund to pay for the enterprise operations? We're going to have to change something on the enterprise side, either the rate or something with expenses or efficiency. Well, if you, if you in fact do raise water rates, uh, is that going to be tied into wastewater like it is now? Are you going to raise the wastewater side or just the, the water? One of the things we don't know is how much of this. That's 
right of the 24,000 that's left as a, as a deficit that we're showing. Uh, we're not real sure. I mean, I do have a, a separate report that I haven't shown yet, but I, I guess that they changed the water rate for one of the larger users uh, in town a few years back, and it looks to me like that uh, that cost uh, the water department about about 35 to 3600 a month in, in revenue. So if, if that was there, we'd be down around the you know around the 20. 20,000, 20,500 mark as far as running that goes. I think we had a 